Welcome to Immunobytes. I'm Dr. Jimmy Gutman. Hi, I'm John Molson. Jimmy, we've done many Immunobytes together, but you've never come with props like this. Well, these are uh, just natural products, John. I want to bounce them off you. The audience is wondering, and I'm wondering, what point you're trying to make. Well, everybody's always asking about cysteine, and everybody's always asking about N-acetylcysteine, so I decided to take a closer look. Well, we know that cysteine is a very important building block for glutathione. The stuff in those bags looks uh, awful strange. Well, okay, um, can't blame you. Uh, this is human hair. <laughs> now, I'm not an expert, but I don't think that's kosher. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty funny, John. Uh, it's neither kosher nor halal. We've got some taboos about eating human parts. Okay, so what does cysteine have to do with all of this? I'm glad you asked. Believe it or not, up until about 10 years ago, the most common source of cysteine was gathered up off the floors of Chinese barber shops. They would get uh, hair clippings, uh, pay a few pennies, and at the end of the day, you end up with this as a raw product. Well, I guess we could call that a natural product, but it's not very appealing. And I imagine there's like a whole series of chemical steps to eventually turn that into cysteine. Absolutely, John, and, and you're right about being uh, uh, grossed out. Uh, um, there's uh, enough complaints about that that, uh, of course, people had to find a different source. Okay, so that's the first bag. What's in the next one? This is the current most common source of cysteine, again, from China, from Chinese ducks. Why China? Lots of ducks. <laughs> but uh, apparently North American chickens are becoming uh, more and more popular. So if the cysteine is chemically extracted from feathers, why do they call it a natural product? Uh, it's more of a legal question than a scientific one. I guess if it comes from a natural product or an animal or a human, it makes it natural. Yeah, I've heard there are artificial forms of cysteine as well. Ah, you're a good straight man. Um, these are so-called synthetic forms of cysteine and they're, they're far less popular because they're far more expensive. Okay, so there's only one bag left. What's in that one? Oh, this one here. Uh, this is a bunch of industrial chemicals that's uh, cleverly modified into cysteine. Uh, another source of uh, cysteine is the fermentation of corn sugar and it requires some pretty high-tech uh, chemistry. Uh, enough for it to be called synthetic instead of natural. Well, in either case, whether it's cysteine or L-cysteine, whether it's natural or synthetic, when you take it orally as an isolated amino acid, it just doesn't work very well as a glutathione precursor. And I guess why uh, drug companies develop NAC. Exactly, but the NAC is actually sourced from the cysteine, so it's the same source. And it's still called a natural product. As it depends who you buy it from, John. If you buy it from a pharmacy store or is prescribed, you get it at a hospital, it's called a drug. You get it at the natural health food store, it's called a natural product, but they're one and the same. You know, that's a real eye-opener, Jim, and that's really one of the major differences between Immunocal and so many other products. If we change Immunocal even a bit from how it's found in nature, it stops working properly. Let's hear it for nature and let's hear it for Immunocal. Yes, sir. To health. To health.